Hi, now I'm going to show you one of my favorite patterns. This is the MP81. This is a spinner. And uh, we have to be very careful when we are, we are doing this dyeing because we have to respect the proportion and as well to illustrate as much as we can the slow uh, motion on the surface of the spinners. So this is the MP81. Actually on this book you will find all the patterns that I've been tying during several years. And as you see on the bottom right here, you can find the tools requested to tie this fly. Uh, the bottom left, all the different hooks and different components you need to have to tie this fly. So let's start. So it's a very famous pattern, MP81 spinner. You start by the black tying thread, you go at the beginning. And then you come back and then to split the tail I need to use a little bit of uh, floss that I put on the back like this. So you pull on it until you reach the end and then this is the place you are going to put the tail. Actually I use the Coq de Leon part of uh, uh, making the tails. Try to use long fibers so I do select a little amount like this and then I will bring them together and to turn them in the right position. Do not hesitate to make it quite long because the spinners got very long tail and then uh, using your finger split in two like this and then uh, continue to uh, wind on the hook shank the remaining of the floss in order to get a regular section around the hook shank. As you see here it's almost right except that this fiber is too long so I cut it. Now the body. The body intended to be a little slimmer than uh, the, the mayfly so do not hesitate to take one long feather and to strip away half of it like this. Okay, so you will have less material involved for doing the body. So you put the tip, you tie the tip first, you stop where you are going to end the body and then with the ankle ply here you grab it the first wrap is probably flat and then you start to uh, wrap around the hook shank I mean twist and wrap around the hook shank and as you see the body intend to be slimmer than on a regular uh, mayfly and that color in the water will be uh, a little darker like a a brownish color which is exactly what we want. There is less different colors as far as spinners are concerned compared to the different colors we have on the fly. So you cut the excess, you clean the body, you turn around, around, around like this to uh, and trim the excess. You can, and you see here that the body is relatively slim compared to the regular mayfly. And as it is a spinner, uh, it will stand in the surface flame like very flat, very low on the river. So uh, in order to see it very well, I do use a color like this, which is uh, what I call light mellow. I do not like very much the white, but uh, that color is very good to uh, spot where is your fly when fishing. So you grab some uh, barbs out of a feather, you repeat on the other side, you bring them together and then you trim the uh, first part of it. So this is for you, this is not for the fish of course. You go, you lift it, you go around like this, around again, around on the back, and it stands 
very well like this um, as it is only to help you to see when fishing you trim it like this in order to split the wing and to have the wing flat I will use the floss and for that I will probably make four or five turns like this and I will tie it just after the uh, spot uh, which helped me to see very well the fly when fishing so I put one wrap under and then I collect uh, the CDC uh, to make the wings and for that I will use the beige the beige is the what I call the khaki campbell try to find some long uh, barbs uh, actually the, the the stem of the khaki campbell is quite short but the barbs are quite long so I prepare here some different feathers just to have enough for the wings uh, probably yes three will do the job so it's uh, kind of complicated uh, as far as you have three different feathers to make together like this and now you put both wings together like this and uh, I need a little bit of a red to make the thorax it doesn't really need a big uh, feather for that because it will just be uh, to give the illusion of the thorax bulky a little bit but not too much because it's a short section so now um, I do grab the CDC by the large section I trim the excess here and we'll do some wraps for the thorax like this and like this leave a little space that you are able to end up with all the different material and now we have quite a lot because we have the wings we have the floss we have the legs so if it is the first time you do this fly please make a whip finish knot at least it will save the fly up to here and now you have to be careful to uh, separate the wing and uh, to keep also the 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 post and to 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 have it flat like this so it's quite complicated compared to the other tying this is probably the most complicated but this is a very very effective fly I must say so you trim the excess of a floss immediately you take your tying thread and you make a final knot you secure the knot by doing a second one as well okay and then you trim so we are almost done you have to to have the wings flat like it is now and you have to, once again to adjust the length so for that take the two wings cut them and then the work is not yet finished because we need to shape it a little bit so you just take advantage of the vise to rest your hand once you're cutting it's you're a lot more precise with this there is another one here so you cut it off like this and here we go so you have a, a split tail split wing a flat wing and you can see easily the fly with the post so thank you for your attention